Hey everyone, we got a little side project today because we've had this mini excavator parked back here for a couple of months now, all winter really, because we haven't really been bothered to deal with it in this weather, but it's actually losing its tracks because these wheels in the front are kind of falling off. So we're gonna take this apart, see what's in there and see if we can fix this. You can almost hear how bad those bearings are. So we're gonna get it up here where it's sort of even because I still don't have room in the shop because of the little Unimog. So we're gonna have to do this outside. So we're gonna start by putting it up on some blocks, make something that's at least somewhat stable. Then we'll have a look at those and see how bad it is because I think some of the little rollers in the bottom are also kind of dead. So uh, we gotta find out how much we gotta do and then we'll start taking this thing apart. <laughs> Oops. Cool. <laughs> so logically, we start out with a little bit of woodwork. So we're just going to build a quick little block thing to set up under here, just to make sure this thing doesn't slowly come down on us while we're taking those tracks off. Right, so that became one of our usual sketchy setups, but uh, it seems like it's holding it just fine. I'm pretty comfortable with that. We're not really planning to go underneath it anyway, but this is just to keep it up in the air because it's probably going to lose hydraulic pressure over time. But even if it does, that wide blade back there and the wide shovel up here is also going to help with the balance. So I'm pretty confident it's not going anywhere. So the next step is going to be to get those tracks off. So the way that they are tensioned is that the tensioning wheel in here is mounted in these bars that sit inside those rails. Now you can't see it, but right behind this panel, there's a sort of a hydraulic cylinder, but it's actually a grease cylinder that you access through this little hatch right here. And you pump that thing full of grease and that pushes out these bars and that's what is actually tensioning this belt. So the way you get it to loosen up is you just go in there and undo that grease fitting so that the grease can come out and then you just press this whole thing together until you have enough slack that you can get the track off that wheel. I'll start it. Eh? <laughs> yeah. Then I'm like, I'm there. I'm proud of it. Yep. <laughs> Okay, that's <laughs> 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 
Ja. Det er jeg ikke lejt. Så vi So we should probably just mention that this is not something we've done before, so we are kind of just figuring it out as we go along. Hi, Link. Yeah. This one's also dead, but the two front ones, they're all right. So we got one on this side and two on the other side. Ej, de ser fint ud bare på mig, det ikke. <laughs> Alright, so we got all these parts off that have completely worn out bearings. Some of them are so bad, they are just coming apart. Now, you can actually buy this stuff new. And they come as complete units that already have the bearings and all this stuff attached to them. And that would probably be the right thing to do, but the thing is, my buddy here don't really want to spend too much money on this right now. So, for now, we're just going to see if we can get a little more life out of this stuff that we already have. So, starting with the rollers here, they are of course gonna get new bearings, at least these three. The last three that are on the machine actually seem to be alright, so we're just gonna leave those for now. But also, you can see on these that they have gotten these concave shapes to them, and they're actually not supposed to have that, they are just completely worn. You can see that a little better on this one, where over here it's almost completely flat while it's a little concave over here. They are all supposed to just be flat like this one, so they are just simply worn out. Now we're not gonna be doing anything to that. You could go ahead and weld these up and put them in a lathe and turn them back down to a flat surface. We're not gonna bother with that because it's just too much work for what we are looking to do here. We're just gonna move all of these around and also the ones that are still on the machine so that we get the least worn parts in the places that seem to be getting the most wear, just to try and get things to wear out a little more evenly. So, as for the tensioning sprockets, we are of course gonna have to get some new bearings for these as well, because this one is completely gone, and this one is just really stiff, so it's just about to die as well. But there is another little problem here. This one, you can see on the teeth here, it's actually not too bad. It still has something like four millimeters of thickness on the teeth right here, and that's actually not too different from the two front drive sprockets. But for some reason, this one is just a lot more worn. Some of these teeth are all the way down to like one, maybe two millimeters. Some of them has also been broken off on the very tips. So we might want to do a little bit to this gear. Again, you could buy a new one, but we're trying to avoid that. So we're just going to see if we can just put a little bit of thickness back into this. So my idea is to just weld on a little bit of material on every one of these teeth and then shape that back down with the grinder. Just to bring it a little bit closer to what this is. So the hope is that by doing this, we can make these parts wear down more evenly. Also along with the remaining sprockets and rollers that are still on the machine. And hopefully it will also last long enough to where these tracks get worn out. Because then at that point, you could go and get new sprockets and rollers and refurbish the whole undercarriage of this thing. So I think I'm gonna start by seeing if I can put a little more material back on this sprocket. 
because if that fails miserably and we have to get a new one anyway, it would have been a crying shame to have already replaced the pairings in this. Right, so if we look at this from the top, you can see that it's not worn evenly. It's a little more worn on this side. It's a little deeper than it is on this side. So I think I'm going to be welding on this side of the teeth all the way around. Alright, well, it's a good thing I wasn't trying to make this look pretty, because it's definitely not. I'm not exactly sure what this is. It's some kind of cast steel, but the welder didn't like this at all. There's a lot of impurities in this, so it was a lot of spattering and stuff, but... Anyway, I managed to get some more material on these teeth, so now we're just gonna hit it with the grinder and smooth this all out a little bit. Alright, so this actually seems to have worked out pretty well. I didn't spend too much time grinding it and trying to make it look pretty because with the amount of dirt that's going through these tracks, it'll grind itself smooth pretty quickly anyway. But now the teeth are a lot closer to the thickness of the other sprocket. And even for some of these that had broken the tips off, I actually managed to build them back up quite a bit. So they're not the size that they were, but overall this is pretty good. So I can already tell that all of this stuff is probably not going to be very easy to take apart. So I'm thinking we're going to take all this and go out to my workplace where we have a big press and a lot of other tools that we might need to borrow to get this stuff apart. So uh, let's go out there. Kind of ironic we've been waiting so long to fix up this little machine because we really didn't want to be doing this out in the cold but as soon as we started taking this thing apart the weather just turned and it's been colder these past few days than it has been all winter so that's just our luck So that's the lock pins out. Now you can kind of see the shaft here, but it looks like it's in there really good. So I think we're going to give this a little bit of heat, see if we can get it to let go. <laughs> okay. That is definitely dead. <laughs> but it does look like the bearings are supposed to sit up against this thicker center part of the shaft. One end is coming loose. This might just come out. 
<laughs> it didn't survive, but we got it out. Mods are right. Okay, so I got all the bearings that we needed. That wasn't really a big deal because I already had the number on those, so it was just a matter of picking up the same type. But I couldn't actually find the type of seal that was in these. It was like a two-piece seal where you had an outer half in here and then you had an inner part on the shaft itself. And then those two halves were kind of sealing against each other. But I realized none of this stuff is actually going at any relevant speed and all it really has to do is just to keep the worst of the dirt out. So I just ended up going with some standard oil seals. This should be plenty good for what we're doing here. And the only real difference is that we're not pressing anything onto the shaft now, so we don't even need the inner snap ring here. So I only had to buy the outer snap rings. So if anything, it just makes the assembly a little bit easier. But I do have to clean up the shaft really well because now the seals are just gonna be sealing up against the shaft itself. So. Uh, Let's clean this stuff up and start putting it back together. Okay, well that was easy. All right. Well, if it's gonna be that easy, I'm at least gonna give it a little bit of this just to keep it in place. Okay. It seems like this is not gonna be as difficult to get back together as I initially thought. Come on. Uh-huh. All right. Well, it is spinning the bearing. It's not just spinning the shaft, so this is looking all right. 
I'm not gonna do a whole lot to lubricate this stuff because I'm not gonna get it into the bearings anyway, but I am just gonna give it some in here just so that whatever gets past the seals will also have to get past this. And if for nothing else, it'll at least lubricate the lip of the seal. Nice. Cool. Oh, look at that. <laughs> nice. All right, so let's get this thing back together. And I'm gonna start that by taking it apart a little bit more because I want to get the last of those bottom rollers off so I can swap all of those around and put the ones that seem to be the most worn into the spots that seem to be getting the least wear. Alright, so I got everything laid out the way that it was mounted on here, and the ones up here in the front, they are definitely the most worn. And I would say that the ones in the rear are looking the best, so I think I'm gonna swap the rear and the front ones. And also, all of them seem to have a little bit more wear on the outside than they do on the inside. So I'm also gonna be turning all of them around. So this is gonna go up here, and like that. This one here, and like that, and this one's just going to be turned. I mean, it is a German machine, so the German torque spec should be plenty good. Now these should just slide right in here. Cool. These things are surprisingly heavy. All right, so just for those wondering why I didn't give it any grease fittings or anything like that, well, first of all, we're not trying to make this last forever, but also there's not really any practical way to do this. So for the big sprockets, they are actually completely enclosed by this big metal housing here. So you can't really get to the end of the shaft and it wouldn't really make sense to put it directly into the housing anywhere because you can't really get to that once you have the track in place as well. And the same goes with the rollers. You can't really put it in the rollers because it's using all of those on the inside of the track. And also you can just tell that all of these heads of the bolts are just completely mangled. So even if you did put one into the shaft, there's a good chance you'll just end up breaking them off from all the rocks and stuff that are constantly thrown up in tracks like this. But I think we're about ready to try and get those tracks on. 
but I say we, but I'm actually on my own today. It is a few days later from when we filmed the first part of this. So uh, I'm gonna have to see if I can do this by myself, maybe with a little bit of help from the machine. So uh, yeah, let's just give it a try and see how it goes. Huh, well it's kind of there. No, oh, it's on the wrong side. <laughs> oh. There we go. All right. It's a little confusing because the cab is turned around, so I have to do the opposite here. Huh. Nice, so we got this back up onto the sprocket in both sides. So uh, now I should just be able to tighten up that grease fitting in there and pump that cylinder up with grease and it should tighten up this whole thing. So let's just try that. I'm not really terribly impressed with this design because you really can't get in here and turn this thing very much. But they probably had some special tool in mind when they designed this. But uh, with just a standard wrench, it takes quite a while. This is actually not too bad. I thought it was going to take a lot more. Right, so I couldn't actually find any specs on this particular machine on how tight the track should be, but they all seem to be roughly the same, where you just leave about 15 to 30 millimeters in between this middle roller and the track here. So it just needs a little bit more. All right, I think that should do it. Let's go ahead and spin it a little, see if it actually stays tight. All right, well that didn't change a whole lot. Not that it should have, so uh, that all looks really good and it's spinning really nicely. This was the side that was really bad. So uh, that's all looking pretty good. So let's just go ahead and put that cover back on here and do the other side. Aha! <laughs> now for that tedious part. Okay, so that should be all done and just in time too because it looks like it's gonna start raining any minute now. But I actually needed to get this done today because I kind of have to move it because I have to get something in there and it's kind of in the way here. But like I said, I'm on my own today and thing is I've never actually been operating one of these machines. I kind of know what some of the different levers and stuff do, but 
this will be my first time really driving one. So uh, yeah, bear with me if it looks a little bit weird. So from what my buddy told me was before when you were driving this in just a straight line the tracks were moving in different speeds so you constantly had to correct it a little bit to keep it going straight and that would make sense you know given the state of those bearings in there or the lack of bearings in there the right track would have had a lot more resistance than the left track but now when I just put both of them in full forward it does seem to be heading straight on so that's really nice. We got that sorted. And actually, now that I do have the opportunity to play with this just for a little bit, I think I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can actually manage to dig a hole with it. Even though I know that's not the correct shovel for digging, but I'm not planning to make a quarry here. I'm just gonna try and see if I can actually figure out to work this whole arm here. Because driving it is one thing, but actually maneuvering the arm, that's a completely different story. an absolute pro with this thing oh so much so that I completely forgot to put my blade down there we go <laughs> um, here we go haha <laughs> this is so much harder than it looks from the outside It's definitely fun, not gonna lie. I kind of want one of these now. But uh, yeah, it's clearly something that takes quite a few hours to really get used to these controls. So I feel like I just have to point out that that full 180 turn that I just did, I am well aware that's not really the best way to do it because that is really hard on the tracks. But that was exactly the point. I wanted to put some stress on them just to make sure they weren't trying to come loose anymore. 
and honestly it didn't seem like it bothered them at all so i'd say this is a great success so that's going to be it for this little side project i hope some of you found that at least a little bit interesting so thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one